We're at Knits and Pieces in Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy. You're also going to see a familiar face in here. Melissa of Rising Tide Fiber Company is just one of the many hand-dyed yarns from Maryland. Let's go take a tour. Hi, I'm Karen Santa. This is my shop, Knits and Pieces. And we're gonna take a tour. This is our fingering wall. Nice. So everything along this wall is fingering weight. We have some hand dyed here. Melissa's Rising Tide Fiber Company. We'll talk about that later, yeah. I think. But, um, some of our favorites. This is one of our local um, indie dyers. Oh, Magpie. Magpie Swanky. Super soft. Merino Cashmere Blend. Um, this is Dreaming Colors Lamb and Goat. What is this one? I don't know if I've seen this before. So Fiber Spade Scrumptious is the softest yarn, I think, almost that we carry in the shop. It is really soft. Um, and the colors are so deep and vibrant, and it's great for shawls and... Um, other accessories, and it's hard to keep in stock. It's beautiful. They also do Vivacious, which is a super wash merino. Um, great for sweaters and things like that. And then as you work your way down, these are more sock yarns and sock yarn accessory, if you will, with the little heel and toe balls and um, small skeins. Where do these come from? Do you all wind these up? So, no, we don't wind them up. <laughs> um, they are part of the Zabberball family. They're Zabberball Perlin. Oh. They come in a little wreath and we just snip them off their little wreaths and then they're available to use for your heels and your toes on your socks. That is super smart. Yeah. So, um, one of our newer sock yarns is Issachar Sock. Mm -hmm. um, we've been really excited to bring her into the shop. They have beautiful, this is gorgeous, not just for a solid sock, but for garments too. You have, no wait, this isn't Regia. This is, oh, this you have Regia, Regia and Lang. And Lang. Nice. And a little bit of KFI. Um, nice. This is Noro's Silk Garden Sock Solo, Silk Garden Sock Tweed, Silk Garden Plain. And um, not really sock yarn, but the same weight. And then we have a few cotton varieties for summer. So these are cotton blend sock yarns. And as well as we have another one that these tucked in here are cotton blend. Oh, neat. And we've just mixed up the bins. So there are a variety of brands in here. We've kind of organized them a little bit by color. Yeah, I can see so, that. So, yeah. I'm also seeing your kits all up along the wall. You have a ton of options. So these animals are really special. Um, Toft and Carrie Lord has created this whole menagerie of, and it, her books are Edward's Menagerie of animals. She's very clever in how she designed them so that once you make one, you can make them all. They only take a couple days or so to make them. And those kits have everything you need from start to finish. So wow. there's a hook, there's stuffing, instructions. And she was one of the first to use videos to kind of support her um, kits. So if you have any questions or problems, you can find tutorials online. And it, they're just great. Yeah. They're so cute. Yeah. And you have a crab. And we have a crab. <laughs> yes. Not blue, but yeah, not the a blue crab. crab. Yeah. This is just a featured yarn right now for this summer. Knitted Wit has done these great um, colorations that are based on historical national park. It's called the National Love Park it. Series in Historic Places. And so anyone who's taking a vacation might find one that is kind of somewhere where they've gone. Um, so, you know, for example, this one is Craters of the Moon. And it kind it's of beautiful. matches up with the hats a little bit. You know, that very popular hat book yes. that came out last year. That is super cool. Yeah, yeah, we see these a lot of places. And I've even seen people wearing them in the parks, mm -hmm. which is super fun. That is fun. We have a little bit of Dreaming Color right here. Um, Dreaming Color has cashmere smooshy, which is just this luscious, soft base. And the colors are to die for. So... 
we keep them up front to tempt people. I think I made him his first hat out of the Dream and Color. I don't know if it was yeah. a cashmere one. No. Okay. He says no. <laughs> it's probably one maybe, of the maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Is he knit worthy now? Oh, yeah. He's definitely. earned his way into definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. And then we move sort of into this sport slash DK area. We keep DK pretty much a little bit of sport all on these twirl arounds. This is an old industrial piece that my husband was kind enough to sand and spray paint for me with a little sparkle. It looks and, cool. Yeah. Oh, and that so, is a little sparkly. Yeah. So this is kind of where we keep seasonal things too. So this is a lot of our cottons, which we're still wearing because it's still really warm outside. It's very humid. Yes, I and very say. humid. <laughs> so, um, so these are our DKs. Um, more sport and DK over here. Um, Melissa's DK over here. Nice. Um, what are these? So this is a, a Katia 50 shades of mohair. Hmm. So they're just, and they're very, very thin. So they're carry alongs. Cool. And so many colors, so many options. Yeah, that's nice because sometimes you don't need like the whole skein. It comes with so much. I know, but there's actually a lot on here. I want to say it's got about about 200 yards. Oh, that's it or nice. Not. Yeah, so it's a really nice. Um, it's really thin, but it's a really nice way to get a little fluff in your garment. Yeah, we have some more magpie as well. They also do a DK swanky, great for sweaters. One of my other favorites that's kind of overlooked at times is the top DK. Um, this is the same woman that does the kits. And it used to be that all her kits were kind of in not too many other colors, but the natural colors. So these are all the natural colors of their wool. And when you knit it up, it's like cashmere. Ooh. It's just, it's hard to believe it's wool. It's so soft. We've started carrying the Sirdar stories recently. I feel really strongly that I want my shop to be accessible to all kinds of knitters, mm -hmm. whether they're um, beginners or experienced, whether they're indie people mm -hmm. or not. Um, and so with the whole crochet craze that's going on, crochet gobbles up yarn. Mm -hmm. And so we brought this in and um, it's been a great summer addition is to our it? line. Yep, that's a, it. Oh, what um, is it made of? It's, it's a cotton nice. blend. It's really nice and it comes in lots of colors. So as we move around, this is another one that's kind of newer to our shop this year. Oh. Misha and Puff. I don't know if you've heard about them. I don't think so. Where so are they? She's based out of Boston, but it's a collaboration between Misha and Puff and Kelborn Woolens. Oh. Um, she has um, been doing ready-to-wear knitwear and selling it that way. And she was selling her leftover yarns. And so with the collaboration they've started to manufacture the leftover yarns into skeins and cool. so you'll see my daughter is wearing one of the sweaters um, made out of the um, space dyes so it's a really fun yarn we call this our bulky barge yeah oh um, how cute yeah and um we keep all, a lot of bulky and heavier weight yarns on here as we move into fall, we'll see more of them there, but yeah. Moving on to kind of our DK into worsted lines. Um, we have two um, local yarns here. This is Lapisto. So mm -hmm. they have an alpaca farm and they came and asked if I could offer their yarns yeah. to the general public. So these are um, undyed and spun locally. And, where is Centerville? Um, so it's right over the bridge near where you were. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's actually the town right next door to it. Oh, nice. So, so not far at all. Yeah. And they, it's interesting because the different llamas produce different um, hands, if you will. Mm -hmm. So they're all oh, alpaca, yeah. but you can see very distinct differences in what their um, product comes out. How the product comes out. Yeah. And then this is Peterbrook. You probably are I've a little bit familiar them, with Cedarbrook. But they're here. The Entropy. She's an hour away. So um, she's really fun. Lisa yeah. Westa. So That's nice. yeah, it's a great one. This is a new yarn that we just brought in about a month ago. 
Yarn Citizen. Yes. Are you familiar with it? Yes. So it's got a great backstory. You know, she saw the scraps on the floor mm -hmm. and gathered them up and created a yarn line out of them. That's so and cool. I love that. So we have a DK, a worsted, and then the cashmere blend. Yeah. This is more Dreaming Color. This is Dreaming Color's worsted line, classy. Makes beautiful sweaters and doesn't pill. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Over here, this is pretty much all manufactured stuff. Yeah, we do do a lot of these chainette and tubular yarns because we're finding that it allows us to have a thick yarn that's not so heavy and not so warm. Mm. Um, so they can knit up on a, you know, on a gauge that's a heavier style gauge, but make something that doesn't make you that's not like warm. three pounds or right, something. Exactly, <laughs> super warm. So. This is sort of our baby section. Mm -hmm. It just means everything's washable. Oh, nice. Um, yep. We have the full collection of Juniper Moon Cumulus and the full collection of Baby Vintage. What is this? <laughs> I can't stop I touching know, it. I know. I know. But you <laughs> it's know. so funny. How do you? How do you work with this? Like I don't even see stitches. You don't. I know. Wow. And this took. This is like one TV show. You what? Know, because it's so fast. Um, is it this right here? Yeah, it is. Oh, man. As I touch all of it. This is our Malabrigo wall. Oh, is what we call it. The wall of Malabrigo. So nice. Yeah. So we always had Rios as our um, kind of our go-to workhorse worsted. And then during COVID, I got really nervous that we weren't going to be able to get it. Mm -hmm. So I bought a whole year's worth <laughs> in one fell swoop. You know, just kind of thinking, okay, you know, I'll always have some. And then it just kept selling. So we carry every color. And That's awesome. um, it might not all be up here at once, but we carry every color. And in March every year, we do something called Malabrigo Madness. Oh. And it's a, um, it's a voting kind of um, contest, if you will, between colors. Okay. So we pit the colors face to face and they work their way up to the champion. I do you know can you guess what would be the champion? I could give you the last two like the the two finalists. Okay, and tell me the pick. two finalists. Okay, so we have pines. pines. Mm -hmm. It's like a bluey green and gemini. So that's from their astrology. I series. would so guess nice. it was this one. Me too. And it was this? Yes. I mean, it's a beautiful color. I know. That's so awesome. Do you do anything like with the special color, like does everyone make a project or? <laughs> no, we just kind of celebrate it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Give that's it a fun. Toes. And then this is kind of our mohair and Issachar section. Mm -hmm. So we have the Rowan mohair, the Cumulus, which is actually alpaca, so it's Ooh. softer. This is also by Fiber Spades and it's um, alpaca silk Ooh. and merino. And so it gives the cut, it's interesting. You can see how it takes the colors differently than mm -hmm. mohair does. It's harder to get a really crisp color. Yeah, but it's um, beautiful. It is, yeah. And then this and the other side are Issachar. And Issachar is kind of interesting for us because they do a lot of combining of yarns, mm -hmm. not just mohair and wool, but they'll combine the tweed and some alpaca or the um, marled and something to create it. So that's been a lot of fun to play with. Hi, my name is Melissa Murphy, and I am the dyer behind Rising Tide Fiber Company. I'm also an employee here at Knits and Pieces. I do classes and coaching sessions, and then I work on the weekends. Oh, nice. What kind of classes do you teach here? Um, I primarily teach sweater classes. Oh. Uh, yeah. I feel like we should talk about what sweater you're wearing now, then. So this is the Retreat Tee. It's by Tiff Nealon. By the time this video comes out, it should be released. Ooh. Um, so it was a test knit? It was a test knit. It's a 50-50 cotton wool blend. And then I just used a DK mini skin set for I the color work. It. It's really cute. Thanks. Well, let's talk about your yarn. Um, so here at Knits and Pieces, um, I have collaborated with Knits and Pieces for about six years now since I started. Whoa. Um, we, I started out just dyeing a, like a store brand. And then over time, we just 
merged it back into my brand because oh. rising because rising tide had more brand recognition um for annapolis being a tourist city wait so did you start on your own as rising tide i started as rising tide and then i was asked to do a complete line for the store so i basically oh. had two brands going and then we slowly but surely kind of merged them together that's awesome um and so we carry a pretty full suite of colors um 100 merino my calvert fingering base and then anything that has speckles or variegations we go ahead and use my Talbot base to get that nylon in there because mm -hmm. most people want to use those things for socks. Um, we've started bringing in sock sets um, because quite a few of our sock teachers want sock sets and of course customers love them. I see this one's limited edition. Does that mean it's only here or was it limited for it was, Rising um, Tide? It's limited here. It's kind of like a trial run for Ooh. sock sets, but they're kind of... Um, flying off the shelves. That's awesome. Yeah. And then we do carry a small um, selection of Surrey Alpaca silk um, for carry-alongs. Those are pretty. Yeah. So where do you get your color inspiration from? Um, I am a huge reader and I like music. So a lot of my inspiration comes from song lyrics or books. Yeah. Nice. Do you want to go and see? You have a, some DK weight, I think. Yep, over here. So it's a similar setup as the fingering, where um, it's a hundred percent superwash merino DK, and again, it comes in a full suite of colors. Um, people enjoy making sweaters out of this stuff. Absolutely. So yes, we try nice. to. Okay, out of the ones that are here, mm -hmm. is there a favorite one for you? Um, I'm a big fan of this. How Zinnia. did I know that was going to be what you <laughs> I'm a big fan of Zinnia right now. <laughs> That's so um, pretty. And then this one is Lyric Love. It's actually named after one of my dogs. I have a couple named after my dogs. Is your dog's name Lyric? Uh huh. Oh, that's so cute. Um, and this one's named after my dog Legend. And this one's named after my dog Petal. Oh my gosh. Do you have three dogs? Mm -hmm. Well, four, but four. I Wait. Have a foster. What about the fourth one? Um, Norman is a foster. He's a forever foster for Aww. me. So I've not kind of formulated a colorway for him. Oh, that's really sweet. Can you tell me about the history of the store? Have you always been in this location? No, I've started down the way, like six doors down, in about half the space total. Wow. And we had yarn under the tables, under the chairs, up to the ceilings, literally like coming out at us in all areas. No place to store it at all. Oh my gosh. The only place that wasn't showroom floor was a teeny tiny little bathroom. And we moved up here after we'd been there a little over a year. We just couldn't take it anymore. And we moved up to this space. And this has been great. How long have you been here? So we've been in this space for five and a half years. Okay. So you're about so six and a half years Seven total? years old. Seven years We're seven old. years old. Yeah. That is so awesome. Mm -hmm. And what made you, I guess, want to start a yarn store? Like kind of what inspired that? Because I, I always admire yarn store owners for <laughs> branching out and doing that is impressive. So I think I have always wanted to have a yarn store. Yeah. I even had a name picked out when I was a kid. It was going to be mostly mohair, which <laughs> is not the name of the shop. Um, and then I went to college in DC and I began knitting again. I'd learned as a kid and I worked in yarn shops around the area and I feel like I have this long-standing institutional knowledge and like it was always about gathering ideas and information so that someday I could have my own and then um, when my last when my youngest went off to college it was time to do something and our local yarn shop had closed about a year prior so the timing was right and that's when I took the plunge. So where did you get the name Knits and Pieces? Ugh, we voted on lots of different things. It was a collaborative <laughs> effort. That is so yeah. cool. 
It's fun when everyone can come together and be a part of something. And it sounds like you were filling in like a community need. I felt like it, yeah. Needs a yarn store. Absolutely. So for people maybe who don't live around here, is there a way that they can like follow along with you or like connect with what you're doing? Absolutely. We do Instagram and Facebook posts regularly. And then we have a website and they can shop the website or they can call the shop. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you have classes here, right? We do have classes here when the shop is closed. We have, I feel like there's something going on in the shop every day, all day, whether it's, whether the shop's open or not. We have classes. We also have what we call coaching sessions. Okay. So four or five times a week, people who just need a little bit of help here and there will come and gather and they'll have an employee with them. So when they get to a point, they have someone to help them over the hump. That's really nice. Yeah. yeah, I know we talked with Melissa that she teaches some classes mm-hmm. and does some coaching sessions. Sure. Who's teaching the other classes? Are you involved with that? Um, I teach classes periodically, but um, I have a I have two other, three other staff people who do coaching sessions depending on the days of the week. So Susie teaches and so does um, Shara. Mm-hmm. And um, the classes are taught by everybody and also, we have a couple of experts that are crocheters who have recently started teaching classes with us because none of us are really what I call expert at that. <laughs> and so that's been a great addition that's with awesome. the crochet craze. Do you have any other like community things that you do? Oh, yeah. Um, we're very heavily involved with the um, South River Knitting Guild, okay. which is a local knitting guild. It's about 100 members strong, and they meet monthly and we support their um, endeavors for charity knitting. And um, everyone in the shop is a member, um, but they make, they make scarves for breast cancer survivors. They make caps for the um, NICU babies. They make inserts, the knitted knockers for breast cancer survivors. And so we support them in there working with that. We also have been a participant in the Hats Not Hate program, which is an anti-bullying program. And um, we have supported, there's another local group called the Naptown Knitters that um, every year between Christmas and New Year's, they bomb the main street Mm -hmm. downtown Annapolis with knitted garments for people that are homeless or who are in need to just take. So they just decorate the streets with hats and mittens and scarves and people can just come and take one. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, do you have anything coming up in the next year that you're excited to share? (laughs) So um, last December, I purchased a property, (gasps) right? So I purchased a property to renovate and move my business into. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. It's taking longer to go through the permitting process than I would have imagined. Mm -hmm. But when it's done, we'll have a bigger showroom, a huge storage space on site, and a separate fiber studio for some of our friends who um, die or weave (laughs) or do other things. And we're really excited about that. And we'll have our own parking lot. Oh, and that'll be nice. Very nice. So what are you imagining, I guess, like with your new space? Are you going to have, I don't know, a classroom or like a gathering space? Definitely. We removed our gathering space, like our cozy space Mm -hmm. during COVID and then filled it with yarn. Mm -hmm. Um, But it will be nice to have more space so that we can bring that back and that we can have a a classroom space that's private enough that we can do classes when the shop is open. Definitely. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll be back to see that. Yeah, we've got some exciting plans with that, some innovative designs. So It's amazing when you get that opportunity to, like, just design it for what you need. I think that will be amazing. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for having us here today. Oh, thank you for coming. It's been fun to go and tour and... We're excited to meet people today. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Thanks again.